This is gonna be a cozy autumn bookstore shopping vlog that's full of books and I end up going to two different bookstores and I actually go with one of my friends who has never been to a bookstore like ever in her life. So get ready for all the wrecks that I'm gonna throw at you guys and I hope you guys enjoy. guys we're getting ready to go into a bookstore this is alex i don't know if you've met alex before um actually they have because i think you've been to vlog like yeah. i've known alex since i was like 10 12 somewhere around there eight something <laughs> and she was telling me this book to read um so i'm gonna go in and look for this specific book but this whole vlog is just gonna be like lots of book shopping so i'm gonna go into books a million have you ever been to books a million before no. <laughs> what are you laughing about? No, I was talking to them when you were when you were looking down. Oh, what are you saying? I don't like books of me. <laughs> you said that you like to read. I do, but I get myself the Amazon. Oh, I I've that. never been to a bookstore, so I'm <gasps> never. I've never been to a bookstore. No, you're not serious. No, I'm for real. Not you're even not Barnes serious. Noble. Yeah, for real. I've never been to a bookstore. <gasps> I haven't had no desire to go to a bookstore. What? But my life is about to change. It's literally about to change. Oh my god, I'm so excited. You've never been? No, I've never been to a bookstore. I mean, the library at school. Oh, when we go in here, the cozy vibes you're going to feel. <laughs> it's. This is. So I go to bookstores sometimes just to go to mm -hmm. get the experience of being in a bookstore. Like, okay. it is like. It feels just so like, it, you know when you were a kid, you used to go to the library? <laughs> you said you used to go to the library. I went to the library at school. Oh! <laughs> but I did, I think we did used to go. And when you used to go to the library at school, like, you know, the feeling that you would get in there? Like, it's just yeah, like very just, like. Yeah, as soon as you walk in, it's just like. You're making that up. No, no, like, no, as soon as you walk in, you just want to take a nap. Yes, yes. Like, it makes you just like, like. We're gonna go in. Yeah. We're gonna go in the bookstore. Alex is gonna go for the first time. Do you know what kind of books you like to read? Or do you just read for like, um, cause the book she recommended me was, what's it called? Relational Intelligence by Dr. Darius Daniels. And it's like a book that tells you about relationships but like links it to like your faith and like the Lord and stuff. So I wanna pick it up, but I also wanna introduce you into like reading for fun. I, I, <laughs> love to start reading like Christian love story books. Yes, and there's Do a whole have there's a whole section, yes. So like clean love stories. Yes. And there's and there are clean love stories that have like no spice. Like I actually made a whole video. I made a whole video on my channel that was like romance books with I'm no a spice. Horrible friend. <laughs> that was, no, I made a whole video on my channel. It's romance books with no spice. For None real? at all. Yes. Yes. And they really like fall in love. Yes. And they're and so get good. Your heart going. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh my God. I'm I might buy <laughs> Introduce her. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, legit read let's go. Fun. Yes, you know how I read for educational purposes. So I used to read, and I st I actually just started again this month reading for educational purposes. But I found that you know how like when you watch TV, you kind of just like your brain. I don't want to say it melts, but like you relax and you just do it, just to, like have another way to relax or scroll yeah. on TikTok or whatever. I found that when I was reading, because I was only reading not for fun, it almost felt like I was working, kind of. Like, uh, you know, I'm not actually relaxing because uh, I'm like, I'm like learning, my brain is like moving. Whereas when you read like an easy love story yeah. or like a, you know, just a fun book, you relax in the same way you do when you're scrolling TikTok yeah. or when you're like watching TV. So, so we're gonna make I'll her a reader. It. Maybe we'll find me a book today about a Christian love story with yes, no spice. Yes, yes, yes. And they yes. have some that aren't Christian love stories with no spice too. Like none at all, zero spice. What you mean? Like love stories, like there are some people who write love stories but they're not Christian books but they have mm -hmm. no spice. Like every love story does not have spice. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't be out here wanting to do stuff. No, there are literally <laughs> like, there's a whole sector of people. Comment below if you like books that have no spice. Like there's a ton of people who are like, I'm so glad you have no spice, like whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, come on. Which I do read books with spice and no spice. <laughs> well, you're married, so it's like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You. you feel a little hot and heavy. Baby, come on. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> All right, let's go to the bookstore. <laughs>
So the first book that came to mind that has no spice that's like a love story is better than the movie. So she picked it up and <laughs> she's like, what'd you say? That's what I need. It's, uh, it's exactly what I was. I was not girlfriend material. <laughs> a little drama, a little spice. A little drama, a little spice is everything I need. <laughs> So we're gonna hold on to this. We're gonna think about it. But I want her to look at some other stuff, and so she's like gonna read but the backs of all of them. Prom. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I also told her that I'm gonna show her some black love stories too while we're in here. Just yeah, because I'm hashtag all about that black love. <laughs> hashtag black love. This one says warning: tissues required. You see that, Alex? Mm. <laughs> says, and this one made me cry. This one also has uh, extended uh, pages, so I'm thinking about having Ooh. her read this one. Dang, she got him off. <laughs> Did she fall in love with somebody else? I can't tell you. <laughs> Guys, I had to give her this book, Love and Other Words. She looked at it, she's thinking about it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if she wanted Which to take it out. The one that you just looked at. Oh, yeah. This is the one that I tell everyone to read. It's so no, you good. need to show and them look the back. Hold on, look, y'all. It said, plan her wedding to an older, financially secure man. My type of man. <laughs> financially secure. <laughs> it's Guys, I honestly think that Books A Million might be a better bookstore than Barnes. Like, there are <laughs> so many books in here but like so they're so like well organized and also there are so um there's so many options like so many books i only see online in here it's just i can't get over it so this is how it's all like um like divided so there's like mystery and then on the other side you can see there's fiction and then there's romance over here and you can see romance that's young adult like there are so many books and just like goes all the way down here and then goes all the way over there too. Who was reading? 500. What is you? this? 580 pages? You? 81 pages? That's almost 600 pages in a book. That's a lot. Like what do you got to say in 600 pages? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> all these daggone books in my hand. <laughs> yeah, you're picking up everything. <laughs> I got her okay. reading. I better like it. I think you'll like it. It's like so cute. This is like she's doing show them the basket. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> like this is a problem. There are so many books in here for her and so many for me. Like we are we're tearing up this bookstore. Like we'll do a whole haul whenever we get in the car. ton of books here like literally so many let's show them what you got well I'll show them what I got first okay um I have two more bookstores to go to in this video so oh, um we were in there. I got wrong place wrong time by Gillian McAllister and this it says can you stop a murder after it's already happened and it's about a woman and her son I think he like commits murder and she actually let me just read the back. It says, late October after midnight, you're waiting up for your 18-year-old son. He's past curfew. As he's as you watch from the window, he emerges, and you realize he isn't alone. He's walking towards a man, and he's armed. You can't believe it when you see him do it. Your funny, happy teenage son. He kills a stranger right there on the street outside your house. You don't know who. You don't know why. You only know your son is now in custody, his future shattered. That night, you fall asleep in despair. All is lost until you wake. And it is yesterday, and then you wake again, and it is the day before yesterday. Every morning you wake up a day earlier, another day before the murder, with another chance to stop it. Somewhere in the past lies an answer, the trigger for this crime, and you don't have a choice but to find it. I've heard that this thriller is so good, and you guys know I like thrillers that aren't like super gory or anything, so I'm really excited for this one. Um, you wanna show them one of yours? Um, she has so many books. I also got a membership. Books a Million is way better than Barnes, truly. Like, okay, so what is this? Reminders, Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I feel like Reminders of Him is a really good book that will get you hooked. A lot of us who are readers, I feel like have read Colleen Hoover's books and like read them when we first started reading and it got us like into reading. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you'll 
love that book. Y'all, she went, she, she went nuts. <laughs> She has so many books. She has way more books than me, too. I also got Briarcliff Prep by Brianna Peppins. Never heard of this book before, but I actually looked it up on Goodreads, and it has, like, a four-star rating. It's a debut book, and it says it is um, about a black girl who... Let me read. It says... Uh, I don't want to read this whole thing to you, but it, it pretty much seems like it's giving Gossip Girl vibes in, like, a prep school. Um, and, yeah, I don't really, like want to read the whole thing but it looks really good it's giving gossip girl vibes in a prep school so i was just like i need to read that and then ah, so glad you got this one if you had been with me by laura nolan you guys know this is one of my favorites i've rated this five out of five stars you will cry i, I hope so like you <laughs> you will cry so i hard. want to be in it like i want to be so into it that i'm like why are y'all talking to me kids <laughs> y'all be quiet i'm trying to read that's literally gonna be with you yeah with and then i also got the far fault in our star wow can't talk fault in our stars by john green i read this book in high school and i'm actually going to be doing a video soon with books that i read in high school that i'm going to read again just to like see if they live up to the hype that i like had in high school so this is one of those books i loved as a kid um so i'm going to read it again and then oh, yep here's what is this better than the movies Ooh, by lynn painter so she wanted some books without spice we did pick out a lot of books without spice and this is one of the books without spice it gives rom-com vibes like if you're in the mood for like a happy fluffy easy book like period that's that's, that's the book to read i also got things we left behind by lucy score now you guys know i didn't really like her first two books the second book i really didn't like and the first book I didn't really like that much, but it wasn't I didn't like her writing. Like, I love her writing. It's super easy to read. This book is literally almost 600 pages. It's 580 pages. But her writing is so easy that, like, you finish it really fast. So um, that would probably be overwhelming for me to start with. Yes, because it's thick. Yeah. But the thing about her books is, like, she puts so much dialogue in it where it feels like they're almost like just talking like the whole mm -hmm. time so like you don't get bored but her books like the plots sometimes just aren't that good so i'm gonna see if i like this one i've been really excited about hearing uh sloan and lucian's story which is honestly the only reason why i picked up this book so i will let you guys know and this book just came out like two days ago okay. <laughs> you said okay no i mean like okay let us know if it's good like, i will no i'm I definitely with you will. i'm with him <laughs> what is it love in other words <laughs> by Christina Lauren. I love that book. Oh, I'm supposed to say the name of the author. And I'll let you do that. Okay. That is one of my favorite books of all time. Like, favorite books. It is such a good romance. Then I also got um, Pretty Reckless by LJ Shin. I've never read anything from this author. I think that this is, yeah, this is by Bloom Books. I can also always tell the publisher based on the cover because, like, this is not the original cover. The original cover actually used to have a man on it. Like, that used to be, okay. like, old books had a lot of, like, men on the covers and now they started changing them to not have the men on the covers. This is a, yeah, this is by Bloom Books, the same publisher. Okay. They have, like, a lot of flowers and, like, not pictures of, like, people. Um, on the back it says, they say revenge is a dish best served cold. <sighs> Pin Scully has had four years to stew on what Daria Followhill did to him. And now his heart is completely iced over. He took her first kiss and she took away the only person he ever loved. I mean, I feel like that's, that's enough to get me hooked. Like, I'm into this book. Um, this also has like four, I think over four stars on Goodreads and almost like 100,000 reviews. So people love this book. Um, so I had to pick this one up. And then you got so many this books. One I'm, oh, excited about. I'm so excited about all these books. Before I let go. By Kennedy Ryan. That is one of my favorite, favorite authors of all time. I'm excited to She's read an incredible this one. black author. That book will also make you cry. Good. Especially because so they got divorced in there. In the book, like they're already divorced, but you find out why they got divorced literally heart-wrenching like you'll mm -hmm. be like crying from that but then you also see them like reconcile and like start to kind of feelings for each other again and it's oh it's so good Woo. oh it's still my turn yep i'm done that's all i got you got okay. way more than i did uh rhythm and you yes by Andy hill brown so she wanted some happy fluffy like rom-coms and that's a good one that doesn't have any spice in it and it is like such an easy read like you're just gonna be in a happy mood when you finish okay. that book like if you're having a down day like read the happy fluffy books they'll put you in a good mood i, I don't know if i can read multiple at like one. that time then yeah. start with one yeah, yeah. Then start with one excuse me while i ugly cry by joya goffney my sister joya yep <laughs> that's a really good book too 
Um, she actually just came out with another new book this year, but everyone loved that book. That book, it's about a girl who she has this like journal where she writes pretty much a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff about her life, like her favorite crushes, 10 things that scare her, just like every, all of her thoughts, but she makes them into lists mm -hmm. and she loses the book at school. And she loses it to this guy that she like just doesn't really like. I guess he like picks it up, mm -hmm. um, but then he loses it. So she's okay, like, "Don't tell me no more." No, that's like on the back of the book. Oh, okay. So okay. they find it together, and the whole book is about that. Because he's like, "Man, I feel bad. Like I saw the book, and then I lost it, and they don't really like each other." Um, and she's like, "Well, it can't get in the wrong hands because if it gets in the wrong hands, then they're gonna like, you know, just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, get like, tell my business." But then someone starts blackmailing her. This is literally on the back of the book. Someone okay. starts blackmailing her and being like, you have to, like, say something out of it's your... I'm not telling you. <laughs> you. They're like, you have to say something out of this uh, journal mm -hmm. to the school or I'm going to, like, spread it around the school. It was probably... I'm pretty sure. Let me, read that. Let me read the back of the book. I want to make sure I'm not mixing up with another book, but I think that that's what it is. Yeah, it says an anonymous account posts all of her lists on Instagram for the whole school to see yeah. and blackmails her into facing seven of her greatest fears or else her entire journal will go public. And Quinn doesn't know who to trust. Des desperate, she teams up with Carter Bennett, the last known person to have her journal in a race against time to track mm -hmm. down the blackmailer. It's so good! It's, it's probably, so good! It's probably him, y'all. It's so good! And the when last you find out who it is, is you're going to be like, ooh. A Thousand Boy Kisses. Ooh, by Tilly Cole. This book will make you cry. Like, you will cry. So there's actually a playlist on Spotify mm -hmm. called A Thousand Boy Kisses. Look it up and listen to the music while you read. For real? It'll literally feel like a movie. For real? I was, actually, I'll send you the playlist. It okay. feels... If you guys are ever, like, wanting to feel even more like a book is like a movie, listen to playlists on spot, like Spotify. People create playlists that have music with the vibe of the book, mm -hmm. and it makes the book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like So there's pretty much for every book in there, there's probably a playlist okay. on Spotify. But yeah. All right. This is all for today. We're going to go. She's going to go. Uh, I'm going to go. We're going to do some more book shopping tomorrow. Um, I think tomorrow we're going to go to Our Town Books, which is, like, a smaller independent bookstore. The owner is, like, a new owner, so I want to see what she has in there. I don't really know what she has, but I'm hoping that she has some good stuff that maybe I've never seen before. I'm back home and in my comfy clothes making chili. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but like I literally cannot be at home unless I'm like in a t-shirt, even though like hoodies or like crew neck sweaters and stuff are comfy, I just can't. But I've decided to start another book. Now, I usually only read three books at a time. Right now I'm reading um, One Week in Paradise by Anise Starr, In This Moment by Kay LaShawn, and I'm also reading Rootless by Crystal Zarapia. And I've really been trying to read like diverse reads or books that people don't talk about because I read between like, I don't know, 16 to 20 books a month, like somewhere in there. And I feel like I read a lot of popular books that like everyone's obsessed with. Um, obviously you guys saw like a lot of the books that Alex picked up at the bookstore were Rex that I have like already read, um, like Love and Other Words. Um, but I also like gave her book Rex that like a lot of people don't talk about. Um, like If You've Been With Me is another book that people talk about Before I Let Go by Candy Ryan, which that is a diverse read. Um, but she also picked up um, Rhythm and Muse by Andy Hill Brown, which that's a diverse read that a lot of people don't talk about. She picked up Excuse Me Why I Ugly Cry, which is a diverse read. So I really try to broaden my like books that I read so that I can recommend to you but also because there are so many good indie authors out there that like people don't talk about and I'm starting another book but this is a book that so many people talk about so many of you guys have probably read but I made a like poll on my like Instagram let me just show you guys first of all make sure that you're following me on Instagram because I share like a lot of little like videos like this with outfits and links and stuff and stuff that I use. But I also talk about books. Like this is a whole little chat about books by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I like. I actually shared this on um, TikTok so you can go and watch it there. But it's like gone from stories by now um, by the time this is posted. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am on stories like every day. But, um, oh also obsessed with fall so glad it's here. But I went to the bookstore and I left a little like book box for you guys to leave like book recs because this was obviously Alex's first time at a bookstore. And you guys left so many good book recs like this one, Mile High, I have not read yet. 
I have read The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gullery, and I have not read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and so many of you guys said I should read Mile High and said I should read Part of Your World. So I feel like I really want to read it now. That's the thing about book recs from like book talk, bookstagram, booktube. When people recommend a book and are so passionate about it, it literally makes people want to read it, which is why I think it's so important to read diverse reads because like if no one is reading them, then no one is probably talking about them and it doesn't like hype people up to like get excited to read them. Like a lot of these books back here, like in this moment, I think only has like 400 reviews on Goodreads, but it has like a 4.5 or 4.7 star rating. So good so far, super, super cute. Um, Rootless is also like a debut book I haven't heard really anyone talk about. I have heard people talk about um, One Week in Paradise by Anise Star, and it's really good so far. I'm really loving it. But I think it's important to read diverse books because so many of you guys, when I left that question box, you're like, oh my god, read Abby Jimenez and like read Mile High by Liz Tom Ford. And like, I was like, okay, now I have to read it. So, like, the excitement comes from community, like the way that all of us love books. I think when you read a book that your friend is loving, it just like makes you love the book even more. Speaking of love a book even more, Alex already started Love and Other Words and she's over 50 pages in. I told her I was like, get to 100 pages because I have this thing where I feel like if you read 100 pages of a book, you'll like be invested. But if you stop before 100 pages, like sometimes it takes a while to like really get into it. And I told her to read 100 pages and she was like, okay, I will. Like it's been so easy. So um, she's over 50 pages already. But now she's making me excited to read that because she's like so obsessed with Elliot and like, I gotta show you our text. So these are the texts she sent me and I'm literally screaming. She's like, they're just talking. She was like saying how she's like reading at this party. And she's like, um, I'm thinking Macy doesn't love Sean. I'm like, yeah, Sean sucks. Man, you're making me want to read it again. She's like, oh my god, Elliot. And then she, I was like, he's the best book boyfriend ever. And I was like, okay, you convinced me. I'm going to read it again. And then she's like, I'm reading at the party. They're all on their phones. Elliot sounds adorable. I was like, oh my god, just you wait. Try to at least get 200 pages or close. I swear, any good book that's an average 300 page size will hook you by 100 pages. She said, I'm halfway there. I'm like, yay. She's like, I'm really enjoying the book. I keep having to stop because people keep talking to me at this party. And then... I said, ha, ha oh my god, that's so annoying, I swear, when you want to just be cozied up with your book and you have to stop. She's like, girl, they don't want anything. Shoot, I'm trying to hear about Elliot and why Mace just up and disappeared, although I think her trauma got the best of her and her fear of losing him like her dad had lost her mom could really be controlling how she moves. And I said, oh my god, now you're trying to psychoanalyze Macy, I'm dead. And she said, girl. Like, talking to friends about books like that will literally make you want to read the book over again. So, I don't know. I just now want to read Love in Other Words, but it also is a reminder that like we need to be reading so many different types of books, not just like the same books, because I think the more that we all read, the more we will all get excited for new books. But me saying that and then saying I'm going to read like part of your world, like it's not an oxymoron. What is it? Is that, that's not the word. It's not a... Um, um, hypocritical. It's not hypocritical because I'm already reading three diverse books, but I am picking this up literally because you guys, so many of you left in the little like romance question box thing like that I should read this. So I'm going to start this. I literally love reading lots of books at one time, but all these are so good and I feel like this one is going to be really good too. Also, I look really orange in this video because the sun is coming through because I like we live on the sunset side. We like live on the lake, but I'm we live on the lake, but I am watching Khalila's videos and I always watch videos while I like cook and get things ready. It just makes like cooking so much more fun. I don't know. I love it.
wild mood. We're getting ready to go to, into Barnes and I actually don't know if we'll go to that other bookstore just because it's like 40 minutes out of town and let's see how, actually let's see how far it is. I really love supporting independent um, like bookstores, but they're so like out of my way because we don't have any here that actually sell um, books. Actually, it's not that far from here. It's like 30 minutes from here. That's really not bad. Honestly, we can do it. We're going to do it. We're going to go to that bookstore after we leave here, but we're going to go into Barnes first, see what they have, and then we'll head over to the other bookstore. Um, I want to get some like more books by black authors while I'm in here. I'm also in a fall mood, so I'm hoping that maybe they have some fall-esque books in here. Um, I do think that Books A Million is a little bit better than Barnes, so I'm kind of like wanting to do like a monthly trip there. I'm not really sure if that's actually going to happen, but I kind of want to because their selection was literally incredible. Um, I loved it so much, but let's head into Barnes and see what they have. Yeah, this fall table with all of these books that are like super fall vibes, like this one's My Roommate's Vampire, Love in the Time of Serial Killers. All of these fall books look really good. I like that they're like kind of putting them all together. I feel like every time I come into the store, I always pick up, or the bookstore, I always pick up a book by Mariana Zapata. I've never read anything by her. Um, I actually own one book by her, but it's so big, it kind of intimidates me. I feel like this is a smaller size where it's not so big that I, like, would be nervous. Well, I don't know, actually, because this is almost 500 pages. Her books are just so thick. I feel like they make me nervous to get into. Comment below if you guys have read a book by this author and if you love it. Okay, I found this book in the romance section. It looks so cute and never read anything by this author, but the cover alone is like making me want to buy it. And you guys know I try to read diverse reads and this one looks like a good one. I audibly gasped at seeing this book because I've been wanting to buy the next one because I'm a person who, if I like know I'm going to like a book, then I definitely want to read like the next book after it. And every book that I've read by Kennedy Ryan has been incredible. And I own Longshot, but I haven't wanted to read it yet because I know I'm going to want to jump Jump right into block shop but this like new cover wasn't out yet so i'm really excited about this one. Oh my gosh i literally gasped looking at it there are so many books in front of me and i first have to before i talk about any of them tell you guys how much i loved part of your world i did end up finishing it and i rated this 4.5 stars literally fell in love with how much she like uses dialogue in the book i feel like it was super easy to read i just just absolutely gobbled it up so with that I am going to read another book in her series. I'm probably going to read this next book. I actually own this, Yours Truly. I'm a big like, if I think I'm gonna like an author, I'm gonna buy like the rest of the series. And I know what I like pretty well. Like I like things with off the dialogue, quick books, like that I can read really fast. And I feel like her writing was that even before I got into it. I just kind of like felt like that was the vibe. So I also own The Friend Zone, which is the first book in another one of her series. I can't even remember like what it's called. And because I love the other one so much, I literally want to read all of her books like right now. So I'm going to bring this home because I feel like I just like I'm gonna eat up all her books and maybe that was just like a one-off maybe her books aren't as good as I think they are but I just I feel like they are and there's another book that's here that also looks really good um it's by Rachel Runya Katz and it actually just came out it's called Thank You For Sharing it says Daniel Rosenberg and Leah Cohen Jackson's last conversation 14 years ago at summer camp ended their friendship until they find themselves seated next to each other on a plane and bitterly pick up right where they left off at least they can go their separate ways again after landing that is until Daniel's marketing firm gets hired by the Chicago Museum where Leah works as a junior curator and they're forced to collaborate with potential career changing promotions on the line with every meeting and post work social gathering with colleagues the tension and chemistry between Daniel and Leah build until they're forced to confront why they broke apart years ago at camp but as they find comfort in their shared experiences as Jews of color and fumble toward friendship can they ignore their growing feelings for each other with sexy charm and undeniable wit Rachel Runya Katz sparks spark sparkling debut. I literally can't talk today. That's honestly every day. Thank you for sharing. Proves that if you're open to love, anything is possible. And the cover looks so cute. So I'm for sure getting this one. Honestly, I love that authors are releasing books, but it's also making me be like, come on, I literally cannot buy every single book that I see. But this book looks really good. It's called You with the View. And I think 
It says two former high school enemies reunite, must reunite for a road trip inspired by their grandparents' broken engagement in this electric debut romance. And the reviews on this are really good. And the cover is cute. I really want this. People literally are writing faster than I can read. Like, this is a problem. little like shop with me at the like third bookstore because while I was at Barnes I realized I just did a Amazon haul like a book haul um and it's literally the video that I posted right before this one so if you guys want to see all of these books that I picked up head over to that video I will link it in the description but I was just like I need to like slow my roll I got 22 books literally 22 books and yeah, so if you want to see what I got, you guys can head over there. But I did end up getting um, a ton of books from Barnes. Literally have a whole bag. So I'm going to go through what I got. I got lots of good ones. I also feel like authors are literally coming out with so many good books. And I genuinely can't keep up. Like I read between 16 and 20 books a month. And I like still cannot keep up with like how fast these books are coming out. And I don't know if it's just me, but like, has it always been this way? Like, have I just been like a faster reader in the past? Maybe like as a kid, I had more time. I don't really know, but I ended up getting three, six, seven books. And the first one that I got is Cleet Cute. And this one is like a really cute book. It says Grace Henderson has been a star of the US women's national team for 10 years, even though she's only 26. But when she's sidelined with an injury, a bold new upstart, Phoebe Matthews, takes her spot. 22 year old Phoebe is everything Grace isn't, a gregarious jokester who plays with a joy that Grace lost somewhere along the way. The last thing Grace expects is to become teammates with benefits with this class clown she sees as her rival. This looks so cute. I mean, the cover of it is just like absolute vibes. Um, this is by Meryl Wilsner. I will link all these books below for you guys so you guys can pick them up if you want to. I also got Life is Short by Abby Jimenez because this is part of her series and it's actually the third book, so don't you worry. I did end up getting the Happily Ever After playlist and I also already own the first book, The Friend Zone. So The Friend Zone comes first and then this book and then Life's Too Short. Now I really don't know what any of these books are about, but I am such a harsh rater where I feel like if I rated um, Part of Your World 4.5 stars, like I will definitely love the rest of her writing. Um, so yeah, I read a lot of books and I feel like that's why I'm like more of a harsh rater. But um, this one says, two years after losing her fiance, Sloane Monroe still can't seem to get her life back on track, but one trouble-making pup with a take-me-home look in his eyes is about to change everything. With her new pet by her side, Sloane finally starts to feel more like herself. Then, after weeks of unanswered texts, Tucker's owner reaches out. He's a musician on tour in Australia, and bottom line, he wants Tucker back. Well, Sloane's not about to give up her dog with a, without a fight. But what if this Jason guy really loves Tucker? As their flirty texts turn into long calls, Sloane can't deny a connection. Jason is hot and nice and funny, and there's no telling what could happen when they meet in person. The question is, with his music career on the rise, how long will Jason really stick around? Is it possible for Sloane to survive another heartbreak? So that's the second book. And then the third one is Life's Too Short. And this says, uh, when Vanessa Price quit her job to pursue her dream of traveling the globe, she wasn't expecting to gain millions on YouTube, fo uh, YouTube followers who shared her joy of seizing every moment. For her, living each day to its fullest isn't just a motto. Her mother and sister never saw the age of 30, and Vanessa doesn't want to take anything for granted. But after her half-sister suddenly leaves Vanessa in custody of her baby daughter, life goes from daily adventure to next level bad, now with bonus baby vomit in her hair. The last person Vanessa expects to show up after show up offering help is the hot lawyer next door, Adrian Copeland. After all, she barely knows him. No one warned her that he was a secret baby tamer or that she'd be spending a whole lot of time with him and his geriatric chihuahua. Now she's feeling, she's feeling things she's vowed not to feel because the only thing worse than falling for Adrian is finding a little hope for a future she may never see. Oh my God, these books look so good. If you guys are new here, I actually love like happy, fluffy, easy books. I also got Credence. This book I have heard 
is wild. Don't tell me, don't ask me why, because I really don't know. I've never read anything from Penelope Douglas, but I've heard it's wild. Um, but Andrea, you guys uh, know uh, my friend Andrea, we went on like a trip to Michigan. She said this book is good and I should read it. So I'm like, you know what? I trust your judgment. And it says, Turnin D. Hass doesn't care about anything anymore. The only child of a film producer and a starlet wife, she's grown with wealth and privilege, but not love or guidance. Shipped off to boarding schools from an early age, it was still impossible to escape the loneliness and carve out a life of her own. The shadow of her parents' fame followed her everywhere. And when they suddenly pass away, she knows she should be devastated, but has anything really changed? She's always been alone, hasn't she? Jake Vanderberg, the father's stepbrother and her only living relative, assumes guardianship of Turnin, who is still months shy of 18, sent to live with him and his two sons, Noah and Caleb, in the mountains of Colorado. Turnin soon learns that these men now have a say in what she chooses to care and not care about anymore. As the three of them take her under her wing, teach her to work and survive in the remote woods far away in the rest of the world, from the rest of the world, she slowly finds her place among them and as a part of them. And she soon realizes that lines blur and rules become easy to break when no one is watching. One of them has her, the other one wants her, but he's going to keep her. Wants her, wait, this is her father's stepbrother? His sons, aren't those her cousins? No, 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 no. Is this why people say this book is wild? No, absolutely not. No, what in the backwoods? Like, really? Okay, I don't know how I feel about this. Someone comment below if they like Credence, because I need some help on this one. Like, someone needs to tell me that this book is good. What the heck did I pick up? Andrea! I also got, um, wow, I literally am shook. I got Thank You For Sharing. This is the book that I talked about in the bookstore. Um, this looks like a really good book. They're like rivals, um, or not rivals. Something ended their friendship from long ago and then they end up being seated next to each other on a plane um, and they can go their separate ways after landing but they end up not because I think they end up working together. I have the worst memory and I literally just read this at the bookstore and I like have already forgotten but I actually saw a TikTok of the author who wrote like a, who made like a TikTok about this like being in stores and it was such a funny TikTok. Like Gen Z is like, something else and the reason maybe she's millennial i don't know but like and by something else i mean like incredible like no other can't even be explained because i i feel like she's like gen z because the angle of the camera is like so high at like 0.5 and then she she had like a cut from her like singing the song and then like cutting to the store with like the thing in books and or the book in the bookstore and yeah, it was just like so cool. So I was like, I have to buy this. This looks so good. It's also about um, Jews of color, which I thought was really neat. And I also got um, You With A View by Jessica Joyce. Joyce, yeah. And this says, mm, I already kind of explained this. It says two former high school enemies must reunite for a road trip, inspired by their grandparents. Um, should I read the whole thing? I don't know. I feel like that gives me like enough uh, it's a debut book. Um, I guess I'll read it. I've read all the other ones, to be honest. It says, Noelle Shepard is unemployed, living with her parents and grieving the loss of her beloved grandmother when she discovers decades old photos of Graham, a smitten man tucked alongside a love letter. She creates a TikTok to search for the mystery man, which goes viral, and she's shocked when his grandson responds. A man who happens to be her high school nemesis, Theo Spencer. Noelle refuses to let Theo's annoying accomplishments in, in adulthood or his sexy smirk stand in the way of meeting his grandfather and unlocking the secrets he knew about her gram as a young woman. When she learns that their plans to elope were thwarted, Noelle decides to take the honeymoon road trip they planned but never got to carry out. There's a catch though. Paul, Theo's grandfather, asks to come with her and he insists that Theo joins them. I'm not gonna read the rest, there's like still another paragraph, but that alone looks so good. Like that's her nemesis and they're going on a road trip. Also, I told you guys, I absolutely love Kennedy Ryan. Her books are so good. I've read Flow by her, um, which is a part of the Grip series. And I also have read Before I Let Go, like literally so good. Before I let go, five out of five stars. For Flow is four out of five stars. So, so good. So I picked up Long Shot, but I didn't want to read Long Shot until I got Block Shot because I'm the type if I finish a book 
Example, I finished Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and immediately want to pick up another book. Thankfully, I have yours truly, so I can like read that today. But if I hadn't had this book, I would have been so sad. So on the back, this says, the way he wants her has no limits. If Jared Foster had a dollar for every time Banner Morales made his heart skip a beat, the heart everyone assumes is frozen over, he'd be richer than he already is. He's found success as a sports agent, but always assuming no means I'll think about it. And he knows Banner's thinking about him. Her simmering anger, the way she puts him in his place, foreplay. She thinks she's won the game, but they're just getting started. If Banner had a dollar for every time Jared broke her heart, she'd have exactly one dollar. One epic failure of a night. After parting on such bad terms, Banner has no intention of ever giving Jared a second chance. She's found success in a field ruled by men like him. She's learned to call the shots and block them when she has to, so she'll ignore the way he makes her heart pound. Sure, he seems carved from her most private fantasies, but she can get past that. She's got her one dollar and Jared won't have her. This looks so good. So those are all the books that I got at Barnes. And then I also showed you guys the books that I got yesterday, which I won't like read the backs of these, but I got Wrong Place But Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. Um, the Fault in Our Stars by John Green, Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score, Pretty Reckless by LJ Shin, which I did not realize that these are spicy reads. I've never read anything from LJ Shin, but now I know. And I think something came up on my TikTok after like saying that I like read, was reading a book by her. Um, Briarcliff Prep by Brianna Peppins, and that's all. So this is a pretty big book haul, but if you guys wanna see even more books, all 22 of those, make sure to watch the video I've already posted. It's on my channel literally already. Um, and make sure to come back on uh, Tuesday because I'm gonna be sharing booktubers that choose my books. I've never done this channel, be done this challenge before um, because you guys know I'm like a really tough raider so I get like worried that someone's gonna give me a recommendation that I literally don't want. Um, and I'm gonna rate it like so low. But I've asked some booktubers that you guys know and love to give me some recommendations for books and you guys are gonna be very surprised by the recommendations because I feel like some of them are really unique. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you guys back here on Tuesday. Bye guys!